Hey everybody, my name's Ryan and here at eTrailer we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we could try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2019 Kia Sereno. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite Proportional Brake Controller. And in conjunction with the Red Arc Brake Controller, we're going to be installing the Takancha OEM Replacement Vehicle Wiring Harness with a brake controller adapter plug, as well as a seven-way connector. What I do really like about this kit is the fact that it utilizes the factory tow package plug, so really makes things easy. If you're unsure if you have those factory tow package plugs, super easy to check. The majority of the Serenos that I've personally seen, I've worked on quite a few, usually have them, so chances are pretty good you do as well. But to double check on the driver's side, Right here in this area, there's a panel you can pop off and locate them plugs. Now, to me, that's really important because it's utilizing those plugs. And with today's newer vehicles, the electronics seem to be very advanced. And with this kit, we're not gonna have to splice into them or cut into them. So we're not going to have to worry about potentially damaging any expensive electronics in our Kia. So with these Serenos being really capable SUVs, people use them to do a little bit of everything, which does include pulling some relatively large trailers with brakes. And if that's your situation, you're going to want a brake controller. That way you can apply those trailer brakes and pull it down the road safely. The issue is a lot of new vehicles in general don't have a whole lot of dash space to work with to mount up a large traditional style brake controller. And that's where the Red Arc is really gonna shine. It is very small in size. The only thing you're gonna be able to see is the knob, which you can pretty much mount anywhere. And it's really going to do a great job of not only looking good, but allowing you to mount it where it's most convenient for you. So this is gonna be a proportional style brake controller. It's gonna have the ability to stop trailers with one to three axles. So more than enough for the Kia. So what it means to be proportional is the harder you apply the brake in the Kia, your trailer is going to match it. So I'll give you an example, say if you're cruising through town, you kind of hit a stoplight and come to a rolling stop. So you're lightly on the brake. Trailer is going to do the same thing. On the other hand, say if you're going down the interstate and hit some traffic and you really need to stand on that brake pedal to come to a quick stop, trailer is going to do the same thing. So What's really nice about that is you're not gonna feel that trailer kind of pushing you or dragging you down as you're going down the road. This is also going to have a user control mode though as well. And to get to it, if you push down on your brake pedal, push the knob down twice real quick, let off the brake, you can see we're gonna have a solid green light. And you would use this in the event, say maybe you're going off-roading, pulling a small camper or something like that and the road conditions aren't ideal this will apply your trailer brakes to the level you set them at so it's always a good option to have what's really cool about this as well is it's going to have intelligent braking more or less so say if you're at a stoplight and you're sitting there for more than three seconds and you really don't need your trailer brakes to be applied to keep you at a standstill this will back your brakes off and allow you to still remain still without having to put all that additional wear and tear on your trailer's brakes. So that's really cool. A little less maintenance down the road in the long run and a great feature in my opinion. You can also adjust your braking force by turning the knob. Zero being the lowest, 10 being the highest. Uh, this is also going to have a manual override, so whenever you push down on the button, it's going to apply just the trailer brake. So you'd use that in the event of a sway situation or something like that where you need to slow your trailer down and get it straightened back out. Now something I do want to mention, I'm sure some of you are wondering, since this is our fuse panel cover here with our brake controller being in there, are you still going to be able to access it? And it's actually pretty convenient. You'll pop it out. And we have more than enough cable here to kind of set this all the way down out of the way and do what we need to do inside of here if that ever needs to happen. 
And what's cool about it too is if you ever change vehicles, anything like that, you can always pull the brake controller out and simply just replace your fuse panel. That way you're not gonna have any holes in the dash or anything like that. So at the end of the day, a really nice setup for the Sorento. It's gonna look really good, work really good, and not take up hardly any space at all. Now, as far as the installation goes, the brake controller isn't too bad. There's a couple of plugs. I will say the most amount of time is actually drilling the hole to mount up your knob. But other than that, shouldn't really take you a whole lot of time. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our vehicle. And over here on the driver's side, we're gonna have a small panel that we need to remove. That way we can gain access to our connector plugs. So here's a panel. And what we're gonna do is remove these two pushpin style fasteners. Let's take a flathead screwdriver and work underneath the head of them. Then we can grab our panel, just kind of pull it down, set that off to the side. And now we can identify our connector plugs. So we're gonna be using two of them. This one here and this one here. And these have dummy caps on them uh, from the factory. They just put them there to keep the connector protected. So we'll have to remove them. You push down in the center. I'm gonna pull that cap off. And same thing with that one there. So if you grab our new harness, one end of it is gonna have these plugs that match up with these ones from the factory. Now I do suggest using some dielectric grease, which you can find here at E-Trailer, and just put a drop on the terminals there. That'll help keep them protected against corrosion and stuff like that. Once that's on there though, we're just gonna plug them in. So these can only go on one way. So you can't get them mismatched or anything like that. You simply just plug right in. Now what I went ahead and did is the other end of our harness, that's gonna to go to our subway connector. I just kind of routed that loosely over to our hitch where we're going to mount up our plug. So pretty straightforward, just comes in, push it through our bracket, and now we can actually get our connector attached to the bare end of the wires. So now if we grab our connector plug, we can go over what color wire is going to go where. So we'll start with this big one here. Our white wire is going to go there, that's for the ground. This one here, the blue wire is going to go to it, and that's for the trailer brakes. Next to that is brown for our right turn and stop. This one here will be black for our auxiliary power. This one here will be green for our taillights. This one here will be red for our left turn and stop. And the one here in the center will be yellow for our backup. So with that being said, the way these work is the end of the wire is going to get pushed into the corresponding hole in the plug. And you might have to kind of turn it. These only go in one way you kind of feel it kind of click in. So once you push it in, you can kind of feel it click into place. You can kind of pull back on it a little bit. There will be some movement, but it shouldn't be able to easily be pulled out. So that's how all these get plugged in. So now that we know where they go, I'll use that same process to get them all connected. So here's what the plug looks like once all of the wires have been put into place. And once you have them all in there, you can take the gray retaining clip and work that through. Simply just gonna kind of push into place there, like so. And at this point, on this side, we can take some more of that dielectric grease and put a coating on the terminals. We'll 
we'll take our seven way plug and get that lined up and connected. With it connected like this, I'll go ahead and just secure it to the bracket. Now the bracket does not come included, but if you need one, you can find it here at E-Trailer. Now moving back underneath our vehicle where we removed our panel, we can take our white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal. That's gonna be ground. So we need to secure this to the body of the vehicle. Any nice clean metal will work perfect. This is a great spot right here. So I'm gonna take the included self-tapping screw and run that through. Now there is something I wanna mention. This extra bundle of blue wire, what I did is just kinda of bundle it up and zip tied it out of the way. We're not gonna be using it. This is typically used for marine applications, for boat trailers and things of that nature. It just taps into your reverse light circuit. So if that's your situation, you'll be pulling a trailer that requires that, you would tap into your reverse light signal but with that being said we're not going to worry about that today so i just bundled it up out of the way if you look we're going to have three exposed wires coming off of our harness and i'm going to get these ready to get hooked up here in a moment so what we're going to do is take the included heat shrink buck connectors we're going to put a yellow one on that wire you just slide it over the bare end and crimp it down We're going to put a yellow one on the black wire, work the same way, and we're going to take a blue one and put it over this red wire. Now what we're going to do is take the large bundle of wire that comes with the kit and we can get them hooked up to our buck connectors. Inside of the wiring, four wires are gonna come out. So we have two red ones, a blue one, and a black one. We're not gonna be using the thicker red wire. So you can kind of just tape that back out of the way like this. But from here, pretty straightforward. We're just gonna match our wires up color for color here. So the black one from the big bundle will go to the black one from our harness slide it into the buck connector, crimp it down, blue to blue, and finally red to red. Now since these are heat shrinks, once you have them all crimped down, you can come back with the heat source and seal up the ends. So now that we have our buck connector sealed up, what I did is just taped everything up with some electrical tape for a little extra protection and secured all of our extra wiring. And this is how it turned out. Just bundled everything up and zip tied it out of the way. While I was in here, I also just secured our module box here. And I did that the same way, just use some zip ties, put it to that bundle of wire and everything's nice and tight. Then what you can do is the big bundle of wire. You can run that maybe about a foot or so towards the front of the vehicle, kind of just out of the way. Later on, we'll continue to route that all the way to the front. But once you have that wire out of the way a little bit, we can reinstall our panel the opposite way that we removed it. So now before we route our big bundle of wire any further towards the front, we need to find a grommet that we can go through to get inside of our vehicle. 
That way, once you locate the grommet, we know where we can actually route our wiring. So I think I found a spot here on the driver front seat area. There should be a grommet below this carpet, right? Somewhere in this area. So to gain access to it, we can take our weather stripping. This just kind of peels off. Just peel it up about halfway. We can remove this threshold. And to do that, you can kind of just grab it, kind of peel underneath it. And it'll just kind of pop free. These clips will release. Let's set that off to the side. We can get this kick panel out of the way as well. And if you pull up on the hood latch, kind of push that way, that will release. And we can grab the kick panel, pop that off as well. And if you take our carpet and kind of lift up on it. So it's a little tricky to see because there's a sealer over it, but if you look, you can see kind of a raised portion and right there is a factory grommet. So what I'm gonna do is drill a small hole in it. That way we can route our wires up here in the front driver's seat area. So here at the back again, I went ahead and routed our bundle of wire. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure to do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts. With that being said, so it comes out from the panel. I uh, use some zip ties to secure it along the way. Went up and over our subframe here. You can see that wire way up there. Just push that over the top of our subframe where it drops down right here. Run it along our fuel tank and where it meets some factory lines. Zip tied it to those. Continue to push it towards the front. Kind of cuts in a little bit here. And comes along the side of our frame rail. Now I did have to use some extra P clamps. These don't come included, but I wanted to use them. That way I could kind of secure the wire better. So you just drill into the side of the frame. Continued on. And right here, is that grommet that we drilled out. So what I did is kind of separated the wires from the black sheathing material. And the only wires that I pushed up inside was the blue wire and the thin red wire. So I pushed those up. And while I was down here, the black wire, that's part of this whole assembly here, I routed that up into the engine compartment towards the battery. So that just comes along through here. Right up through here. And straight up. So straight up through there is where our battery is. Now when I pulled it tight, got it close to the positive battery terminal, I had about five or six foot of extra wire remaining that I didn't need all that length. So I cut it where the positive battery terminal is. So I cut that five or six foot of extra piece of wire that we didn't need, and I dropped it back down. So I just followed that same path. And that's because we're gonna to have to hook that up inside. So I figured that was a good opportunity with that extra wire just to use it. So that extra piece ran to the grommet and that extra piece actually ran up inside of the vehicle. So now we're gonna have the extra black wire that we ran, the thin red wire, and the blue wire inside of the vehicle. When you're done pushing everything through the grommet, I do suggest using some silicone, which I've done, just to seal everything up. And you can pick that up right here at each trailer as well. So now under the hood, right through that opening, is where those two black wires came up and I connected those to fuse holders that are included. And I just used the provided heat shrink buck connectors and ring terminals, just how we crimped earlier. And 
we'll kind of go through this one by one. So this wire here, this black wire, this is the one that was in that big bundle of wire from the main harness here. And that's gonna get connected to the fuse holder that says seven way harness. This black wire here, I put a piece of blue tape on it. This was that leftover wire that we had cut and routed it back down inside of our vehicle. This wire is gonna get connected to the fuse holder that says brake control power fuse. So now that we have these set up, if we open up the cap on our positive battery terminal, we're gonna have a nut right here. We're gonna remove that nut using a 10 millimeter socket. Sometimes these don't want to come completely off. And if that's the case, we're not gonna force it off. We'll find out here soon. You'll know if the nut kind of just wants to stop. That is the case, but it actually looks like we're gonna be able to take it completely off. So that's nice. Pull that off. We're gonna take our fuse holders and simply just put those ring terminals over that stud and reinstall the nut. Don't worry about putting the fuses in, the holders just yet. That's gonna be the very last thing we're gonna do. We'll just tighten these back down. Now back inside on the driver's side floorboard, you can see that's where all of our wiring came through through the grommet that we drilled out. I just taped them up real good and started to route them up towards our kick panel. And then I attached them to our brake controller harness. So that is this bundle of wire right here that has this connector end on it. I didn't route this or anything yet. I just kind of let it hang out. So here's the wires from our brake controller harness. You're gonna have four, blue, black, red, and white. These are the wires that we routed from the underside of our car through the grommet. And I just used butt connectors to attach them together. So blue for blue, black for black, and red for red. So really straightforward there. The only other wire we're gonna have to focus on is the white wire that comes from our brake controller harness, which is this here. And this is just gonna be a ground. The other wire from our brake controller harness, the white one, this is going to get grounded. And what I did, is just routed it down kind of by the grommet and attached a ring terminal to it and used a self-tapping screw to secure it to the body of our vehicle. So I went ahead and kind of taped up all of our wiring real good and just secured it up nice and tight along this area here using some zip ties, pushed our carpeting back down. And now we can take our interior panels here that we removed and reinstall them the opposite way that we removed them. So now what we can do is attach our red arc plug to the Takancha harness. And we have to do that because the plugs are not the same. This Takancha plug will not go directly into the red arc brake controller. So there's a couple ways you can do this. What I'm gonna do is just use some buck connectors, cut the plug off of the Takancha side and just splice into the wires. That's perfectly fine. If you don't want to do that, we actually offer an adapter plug. So how that'll work is it'll just plug into this end on the Takancha side and the other end of the plug will just have this type of connector. That way you can just plug into the Takancha harness and then right into the Red Arc brake controller. So you got a couple of options. You can find that plug right here at E-Trailer. But as I said a moment ago, I'm just going to cut the wires and splice them in. Kind of peel back my wire loom to get those out. I like to keep a little extra wiring. So I cut it back a little bit. A 
Then I'll just do this the same way we've done all the other connections. Just peel back the insulation and use some butt connectors to pair the two ends together. So I went ahead and spliced our wires together and this is what it looks like. It's really straightforward stuff. You just go color for color. So red to red, white to white, black to black, and blue to blue. But now that I have them connected, I'll grab some tape, kind of bundle everything up and push our wire loom back over the wiring. Now that we got that done, before we mount up our box, what I like to do is just plug it in. So that connector is gonna get plugged into that side of the box like so, and on this side of the box, there's gonna be another connector, and we can plug whichever end of the wires is going to fit best. So I'm thinking where we're gonna mount our switch, the straight plug will work better for the switch. So I'm going to plug in our 90 degree connector there. So it'll just get plugged in like so, and I found a spot underneath the dash. It's kind of up and a little tricky to see. So I'll mount this up there and then show you guys what it looks like. However, the way I'm gonna mount it is by using some two-sided sticky tape. Now this tape doesn't come included, but that's what I'm going to do to get it secure. So I went ahead and mounted up our main operating unit and just to kind of give you a reference point, it's underneath the dash, kind of right here in this area. Almost, if you follow the gas pedal up on the side of it, kind of straight up, right up in here. So this is how I ended up securing our main operating unit. You can see I stuck it to the side of one of the factory style computers. Really nice flat surface gave me more than enough room so you know that's going to be secure when you're going down the road now we need to find a spot to mount up our switch now with these you can mount them pretty much anywhere you want as long as there's enough room behind your panel that the back portion can actually have room and the plastic can only be a certain thickness too so if you have a really thick piece of plastic on your dash probably not going to work but for the most part can put these pretty much anywhere which is really nice what i think i'm going to do is actually mount it to the fuse panel so if you pull that off what i did is went ahead and marked because we're going to have to drill a hole and what i've done is just used this as a template so i put that on there where i want it used a ballpoint pen to mark those spots where we need to drill now I can get our drill bits and create our openings. Make sure you get it right in the center where you want it. And drill it out. Now that we have our panel drilled, we can take our switch and plug it in. We're gonna take it and put it through our panel. And you wanna make sure that the knob here, you wanna turn it as far clockwise, or I'm sorry, counterclockwise as you can. We're kinda of holding that in place. You want to take this Put that over. Everything is pretty small, so it's a little tricky to kind of hold everything where you want it. Let's get it lined up like that. You can take the nut and get that going as well. So once you have that on there nice and snug, what you can do is again, make sure that your knob is as far counterclockwise as possible. We're gonna take our button and with the zero, you're gonna want that to face that 
little indention there that comes up. So we'll take our knob, line it up. and push it on. Now that we're done with our switch, we can kind of push our wiring in there, reinstall our fuse panel, then we can move under the hood and install our fuses. Under the hood, come to our fuse holders, take the included fuses, push those into position. Now we should be able to power everything up, test it, and make sure it's working properly. So now to test everything, I plugged into this tester box. You can try our left turn, our right turn, our brakes, our tail lights. We'll hit the manual override on our brake controller. And as you can see in the top right corner of the tester, we have our 12 volt auxiliary power as well. Now that we verified this is indeed working, it needs to be calibrated and really nothing crazy about that. You would simply drive around like you normally would with or without a trailer and under normal driving conditions, usually this would calibrate within 20 braking cycles. So every time you stop and go and the brake controller becomes confident in the direction, it will calibrate and once it does, the light will go to a solid blue color. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Red Art Tow Pro Elite Portional Style Brake Controller on our 2019 Kia Sorento.